try something here. There's some tinting that will go on on those scratch thing. Now, those scratched little feathers are the correct color. They're actually, the, you know, the lighter color. You gotta start out scratching them white and then they will start to go into the, um, the color that you spray onto them. Feathers. I don't have my color in here yet, which is really a more white gray, grayish kind of color. This I can even erase out. I just wanted to show you something um, of how you can go about that. All right. So, like I said, lots of detail in that area. Um, down here, I probably could use. I can use this lighter blue on the bottom, even though that's darker. I can just sculpt it in a little bit with um, with the uh, same color because the other one's going to be darker anyway. Let's try to erase the pencil line. Here we go. A little shaking. Get that out of the way. And now... I can go after that area. But like I said, if I start erasing this right now on the clay board, I find it to be, it behaves better later when it's biting and, and holding on tighter. It's, it's good for scratching and everything, but as far as uh, erasing down to the weight of the board and letting the weight of the board work into this for me, it works better later on after it's been on there a while. Okay, so let's get... Um, just a little color. Um, okay, so this has frisket on it, and I'm just gonna spray on the frisket a little bit. Oops, we changed over to the wrong color. Let me get the blue. Okay, so blowing that out, cleaning it out, get a Q-tip, quickly switch colors from that watered down beige color. All right, let's see where we're at here. That should be good. Like I said, I'm just gonna show you how I would put in. Okay, so this is frisket. So you can spray, you can do your own thing on here. Still water coming out. Yeah, you're protected. It's all protected there. And this is going to be very dark anyway because it's where the blacker part of, part of the beak comes in. But you take your lines down to what you need to hide it with. Um, okay, so actually, yeah, there's a nice blue shade coming off that. So I'll just dust in a little bit here. Keeping it on the frisket and trying to pull some of this. I'm going to change that line I see in the drawing. It, it seems like it should be more rounder. So, to make those changes. I don't know how that happened, but I remember seeing that before and I didn't fix it at the time. But I'll get that. Okay. Um, this was conventional brush. I just outlined it, as you can see. As long as it's tight and other, once I airbrush off of it, you know, like that's just conventional brush. Just I was just fooling around just trying to experiment. But once you airbrush over your paint lines, like in drawing, when we draw a portrait in, in class and we're showing somebody how to uh, get the light drawing down, and then hide the lines. So you don't want to, you know, draw a super dark drawing and then try to erase and try to put, especially black and white, doing, you know, different uh, shadings that will uh, still have lines in it. So you gotta you gotta hide the lines by making sure they're light enough. When you're doing a T-shirt, black and white portrait, um, you know, you've got to put it on that T-shirt. And the light areas that are 
in the super uh, highlighted areas, you got to give yourself almost no information. You got to have some kind of information, like on a nose or something. Uh, but where there's a strong shadow, and you're going to go up to say the mascara on the eyelashes or something, you can draw dark. You can you can draw your line dark here because it's going to melt into the dark. So it's the same thing in color. Where, wherever I'm going to go. I got to make sure I still need to see certain lines, but if I'm going to paint a color in there and find out the pencil line is is uh, going to still show, I don't want that, you know. Like for example, this pencil line, uh, I know again the shaking is wrong, and it's just for some reason it was not curved the right way, and. Uh, so I'll just change that later. But the thing is. That line is, is almost gone now, but sometimes you're going to shade a color up to, say, this line, and there's a darkness coming off of it, and it's going to be darker than the pencil line. So it doesn't matter. As long as you have, like, the little smile line in between and where his beak is closed, you see that uh, his mouth, he looks like he's smiling. That's what looks so cool about him. But he also looks like he's focused on his meal <laughs> and he's uh, zeroing in on it. But the, uh, the line can be there a little bit because it's going to be a guide for me to airbrush and know where it is. Because after a while, once you start putting a lot of color on, you're going to get lost. And uh, okay, so there's a little bit of. Uh, Continuing on with this, I see uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, yeah, this color lives over here too. Just a little bit. It's going to be a lot of uh, scratching or using a bouncing technique to get that, to have all that, the line work in there. i got to think about how I want to do that. I, uh, I figure it out when I get there. <laughs> Okay, uh, the, the blue above the, the nostril, or whatever that is, it's a little bit of this color. I'm going to put a little bit there, but it's really going to have almost like a sky Caribbean blue, and then it will shift over to the green. So it's just, you know, opaque paint being treated like a transparent, just very nice and uh, easy control. And this goes off of here, there'll be a highlight right there. See the white of the board? Well, I'll do a little darker. I want the white of the board to separate it. Now you start going into like three dimension because you're, you're going from a flat look to sculpting and starting to do your thing. Um, I'm just looking in here. I can get darker in here, right by the feathers. You just wiggle it a little bit. And just let the airbrush kind of put some darkness in there. And it even goes into some blacks and darker areas. But you need something to, to scratch from. And this will actually be almost like a black color in there. Okay, so as I go, and just a little more color right here. Now I'm going to spray over that line. Very lightly, like I said, I'm treating this like a transparent. And that's it. I mean, I'm not going to go any further because beyond this point, it goes more purple. And this is like a highlight round area that goes up into a very nice, you know, uh, contour to show the, the beaks going, you know, round. All right. So it's just a little bit of how I go about it. And we'll continue on on the next video and just uh, stay with me on it, have patience. Um, when you're doing it, when you're painting, like I said, you can erase. You can, I can take uh, sandpaper with the clay board and if I get the real like thousand, you know, 800 or a thousand, I can sand, like you're doing a wood project, I could sand anything off here and then get the finer, go from the rougher paper to the finer paper and then treat it you know, and, and polish it back up. This is so smooth. And I can actually do that to any part of this painting where you sand back down to the board. 
in the old days with the illustration board, you could you could go back down to the board, but I've even used house putty, you know, uh, to repair dents and dimples and rips and stuff in the in the paper. I don't have to deal with that anymore. This is a, a beautiful surface, and it allows you to, uh, you know, cut into it if you need to. Uh, you could make you could paint the moon, and you could cut gouge craters into this uh, not super deep but you could have texture you know if you wanted it so I hope this helps this is uh, the early stage of doing the beak uh, the eye I like I said I worked on a little bit of that off camera to rough it in it's still got to be softened and worked out with a ver very nice highlight coming through here which is hard to see in the reference photo but if you if you take the photo and go under color correct lighting and study it, even under magnification, my lamp is, an, is a daylight lamp that has a magnifier in it. So not only could I look through magnification at my reference picture and start studying something very large and see what I would have missed, you know, regular looking at it, uh, it's great. So don't be afraid to use magnification. Don't be afraid to use... Uh, you know, tools that help you like I did with the Dremel tool and try to think of other things. I mean, the airbrush is made to spray. So you can spray, as you know, from other videos, maybe messing around with the airbrush. You can spray through material. You can spray through stretched uh, batting. You can make clouds. You could spray, th you could spray around a leaf and you'll get the shape of a leaf. It's great. The airbrush is great. So anyway, this is hiding some of the color of the you know it's not this isn't very nice looking with the frisket on there um let me just see if i could show you a little bit of how i sectioned this in so when i put the frisket on okay that's not in the picture let me go up to the next section all right what is in the picture <laughs> okay this piece bear with me for a second because they're overlapping okay so this piece of frisket that's protecting the the green out of focus background and the beak has to be put back on and looking at it right now there's no gaps there's no um, right here there's no white gaps that means I lined up my frisket accurately okay and so there you know there's your background I am gonna lighten these areas when I look at this from a distance and you study your work later I saw that, yeah, the, the reference picture is a little lighter in there. I'm trying to get the background close to what the other one is, but my main concern is just an out-of-focus background and a reference to help me. Like I said, the, the, ba the background in the photograph is I can match it closer and closer, but it really doesn't matter. As long as it's out of focus, that makes this uh, object, the bird, become super sharp, was, is what the camera has done, depth of field, you know. And it's just a great thing to see in a photograph, a blurry background, or uh, sometimes a blurry foreground, midground, sharp, and then more background out of focus. So experiment with that kind of stuff. Okay, that's the end of this video. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, and thanks for checking these out. Don't forget to share them. There's other artists out there that you know might want to see these, these videos, and they won't know unless you you know, you and I share them. So thanks again. Boy, this is a half hour video. I didn't even realize it. Okay, guys, take care.